So cylinder two, that's my misfire and cylinder right there. You see the difference in that line, Caleb? How, how, how the firing line, and there's like no spark line here at all. Yeah. So this, this one's definitely misfiring. Yeah, I got no spark coming from this at all. Look, the spark's gone. Completely gone. Super weak. Barely jumps it here. So the electrode's way inside there and it's barely jumping that gap. There's still spark there, but it's super weak. Super weak. That's on the number two. I want to check the, sorry, number three. That one's got strong spark. So where's my problem, Caleb? Hey guys, Scanner Danner here with my son Caleb behind the camera and we have my son's car in my driveway, my other son, my oldest, Jacob. Uh, his car was towed here uh, because of it running very poorly. Now here's the real quick history. We were at Rosedale Tech last week, Caleb and I teaching and he was filming. We did a whole bunch of classes, which you guys will see on Scanner Danner Premium, by the way, coming up. And um, his college is real close to the school and it just so happened he had a coolant leak and I said, we'll bring it up to school and we'll take care of it. And it turned out it was a water pump, no big deal. Bad water pump uh, coming out of the wee pole. Everything was fine, the car was running fine, just had a coolant leak. So we did the water pump with the engine class. The engine class did it at the school. Uh, we had the valve cover off uh, to lift up the um, cover to get the top co timing cover off. And then uh, that was it. So water pump, valve cover gasket, and um, we, you know we had the spark plug wires off so we could pull the valve cover off. Put it all back together. He took the car and he called me later that night. Said, "Dad, my car is misfiring." He felt a misfire, and my assumption was, well, the plug wires were disturbed. Maybe we got a little bit of moisture in the boots, or maybe a little bit of oil because it did have an oil leak on the external part. And so my suggestion to my son, given that it didn't have a misfire before any of this work was done, I said, let's get some dielectric grease, you know, cause I'm trying to troubleshoot remotely, get some dielectric grease, put it in the plug boots and um, let's see what it does. And so he did that, he went to the parts store. He only had a misfire pulling hills. And uh, when he was finished doing the dielectric grease, he couldn't even leave the parking lot. <laughs> so, and now it's misfiring very badly. And that's, we have the car towed here. My suspicions given that, or this coil has failed. You guys remember, we did a video on this car with a faulty coil. We used a used coil that I had in my shed from the salvage yard engine that was put in this. Um, so we put a used coil in it and that was maybe about a year ago that, it, that that was done. We'll find out in the edits when we're done and we can link to that video so you guys can see it. But given the symptoms, no symptoms whatsoever before this work was done and now putting dielectric grease in the boots like he couldn't even drive the car, that's suggesting to me weak spark. Now, I, I can't really uh, put two and two together as far as why would the spark all of a sudden be weak after the work that was done. Uh, the only answer I can come up with that is maybe this coil was failing and just by us unplugging the spark plug wires and the boots that uh, that clean path that it had was now altered and so therein lies the slight misfire he had from a weak coil so what I'm saying or suggesting is the problem was already there it just wasn't making itself known yet and then when we put the dielectric grease in to me uh, that says weak spark for sure because a dielectric grease is not a conductor some people think it's a conductor it is not it's an insulator it insulates so what did we do we insulated the spark plug tower to the boot and we uh a weak spark's going to have a harder time jumping you know the gap or the connection with a dielectric grease in there so anyway long intro i apologize i want to get this thing done quick first thing we're going to do is we're going to check it for spark see how strong it is I lied. First thing we're going to do, I'm going to start this, let you hear the misfire. Then we're going to do that. This is why he had it towed.
Well, hopefully the hopefully the camera picked up the misfiring. It's pretty severe. <laughs> All right, my favorite spark tester. All right, test light. Our interest is to see how far this jumps a gap. Caleb, you've seen this done a million times. The coil lives inside of this. We'll go after this top plug wire right here. Keep my keep this light closer than my finger. I'll be okay. So what I want to do, this is going to be tough for you to see. Yeah. It's barely jumping out of this tower. Yeah, that looks pretty like, weak. What I'm what I'm interested in is what does it do when I rev it? I don't know, man. It looks pretty good. That electrode starts about right where I drew that or scratched that line. That's where the metal electrode is inside of there. And so it's jumping a gap. At least that's about three quarters of an inch. And so I'm interested right now in looking at that spark while I rev it. I want to see if that gets dim. I'm really glad I didn't order a coil for this, Caleb. I, I'm, I'm surprised by that. I really am. So, why are we misfiring so bad? Just some bad plug wires, maybe. There ain't nothing wrong with that coil, man. That's a nice, strong spark. I want to make sure that that's not arcing on the outside of the boot. It is not on that one. Next. Yeah, dude, it's really strong. I'm just looking for it to jump out to my test light. All good there. Same with this one. Scared me. Yeah, dude. I'm glad I didn't order a coil for this, Caleb. All right, so you know that video that's supposed to be really quick? Why is this misfiring? Now it's not misfiring anymore. <laughs> I mean, it was bad. What the hell? This stupid car it was missing really bad. Come on, man, we're going for a ride. I mean, I, I captured the misfire on camera. A weak coil was the only thing that I could, I could really wrap my mind around as far as why the symptoms were the way they were you know we didn't do anything other than pull the plug wires off to pull the valve cover off well, so much for a misfire case study huh right. I'm gonna give this back to him tell him to drive it
I hesitate to do that. I mean, it was missing pretty bad. Uh, see that? Found a little bit of a miss right there. Whoa, I thought you were about to hit that dog. <laughs> what dog? There was a dog running towards the. I didn't even see him. Yeah, dude, yeah. there's a miss right there. That's pretty bad. That's a pretty bad miss. Yeah. So I can recreate it on the road. I mean, he just needs a set of plugs and wires. I mean, the spark was pretty strong coming out of the plug wires. Um, uh, cap and rotor maybe. It's definitely secondary ignition misfire just by the feel of it. I have no doubt in my mind that this is a secondary issue. pretty bad right now. Yeah. Good on this pull. Good on the high RPM. Let's do a fourth gear bog. This is where we're packing all kind of air in the cylinder because my throttle was at wide open. You felt it missing right there. I don't know if you heard it on camera. Okay, but I definitely felt it. Pulling out, bad miss, pulling out in second gear. Fourth gear, lugging it, bad miss, bad miss. We need our, we need our scope now to tell us which cylinder's what, something's going on here. I'm not convinced of the spark being weak. I mean, although it was jumping a really, uh, I'm thinking the old video, man, that spark jumped about that far. Do you remember how far that spark jumped out of that coil? We still could be dealing with weak spark here. This is not a quick video anymore. It's because you said so. That's why. We have to prove that it's the coil. I do not want to throw a coil in this. I'm not convinced that it's the plug wires. So uh, we're breaking out a little, um, little pocket scope. It's called a U-scope. And um, you guys can find this tool in the uh, description of the video. I always put links for the tool page. I have two tool pages, one on AES Wave and the other one is on Amazon. And uh, this one you'll find on my AES specific page. And we're just going to do some quick ignition analysis. We're just going to put this over each plug wire one at a time like that. Okay, and we'll keep you guys focused on this screen. It's super tiny. Up here real quick, Caleb, when you do ignition analysis, it's always best to get as close to the, um, the end as you can, the cap, because you could have like say an open plug wire right here. Let's say it's open right here. If I go on this side of it, I'm gonna see one thing compared to going on this side of it. So we wanna be at the end when, whenever possible. I don't use this scope much, so bear with me. It's missing pretty bad right now. Got a dead miss. All right, so that's cylinder one. Um, this is cylinder two. That one's got no spark line at all. This is cylinder, cylinder three, and then cylinder four. So cylinder two, that's my misfire in cylinder right there. You see the difference in that line, Caleb? How, how, how the firing line and there's like no spark line here at all yeah so this this one's definitely misfiring yeah i got no spark coming from this at all look the spark's gone completely gone super weak barely jumps it here so the electrode's way inside there and it's barely jumping that gap i don't know can you see the sparking don't move. There's still spark there, but it's super weak, super weak. That's on the number two. I wanna check the, sorry, number three. That one's got strong spark. So where's my problem, Caleb? Number three? That one's, this one's got strong spark. I'm just listening to it, listen. Yeah. You can hear it. Yeah, you can hear that. 
And that's the number two, correct? Number two, listen. Real strong on number one. Listen to the number three. Nothing. And no change, it's a dead miss. There's number four. Yeah. So, so we do we do have weak spark on the number three. This being a one coil system, it's not possible, Caleb, to have, well, it is possible that you can have weak spark on one cylinder with it being an input problem. I actually have a case study on this in my chapter 21 uh, material in my book I have um, a distributor It's called an optical distributor this doesn't have that but on opticals on the older Nissans you get oil in the pickup and it would block certain parts of the drive plate and it can make it misfire on a single cylinder with a distributor really throw you off but what I wanted to say to Caleb and to you guys is this cannot be a weak coil because it's the same coil that fires all the cylinders so our issues in the cap Caleb we have an issue inside the distributor cap I don't know if they had the cap off or not um, but let's let's one more time show everyone the the waveform up here uh, how come whenever you were looking at the the scope you said number two and not number three because I'm an idiot and I counted this as the number one and this is the number two but the number one's over here so I just was looking, this is number one, this is number two. So I was looking at the engine backwards. It was really the number three. So my apologies, good question, Caleb. Okay, I'm just gonna move my lead. You stay focused on this. I'm gonna move this to the other cylinders. So we got more than one cylinder that's being affected by this. That's, that's on the other. Yeah, this is definitely a cap issue. See that spark line disappearing? Actually, it's affecting it looks like it might might be affecting all the cylinders in some way, which would make more sense by the way it was misfiring. Sorry, I messed you up there. But the other ones are still hitting. Like that one's clearly a secondary issue, but we have a dead miss right now. Listen, no change, no change, okay? Cylinder four. Yeah. And I can hear the spark. Cylinder two. Okay. Cylinder one. Okay. Our issue is inside the cap. Now, if this was a bad plug wire, what we would see is a really, really high firing line when I'm connected to this guy. So, and that would be, I'll connect all the way up to the end. We would see a real, real high firing line. And, and we do see, we do see a high line there. Firing line's the one that goes this way. Yep. We do see that, it's pretty high. Let's go, let's compare that to one of the other cylinders, height wise. Now, see that one's there too. So I, I, what I'm getting at here, guys, is I am not suspecting a open plug wire. What we have is a problem in the cap itself. I'm gonna prove that to you. Come over here, Caleb, on this side. And what we checked earlier, having strong spark, I, I believe what we're gonna see now on this one, that was the one we were checking too, was the number three, which sits, yep, right up top. It just started. Yep, it's running good now. This spark's going to be good now. How weird is that? Impeccable timing. Wow. So was it the plug wire? I don't, I don't think so. If it was... If this had an open plug wire right now, me just touching that would have, would it'd be arcing me right now. Yeah. Cause I'd be the path. There's that same cylinder now, not misfiring.
this is a this is a cap this is a cap issue so here's what I got here's here's my thought now how do we tie all this together um, moisture I think in the cap this had coolant that went everywhere the, the radiator cap actually had a seal that went bad too and when Jake brought us this there was coolant everywhere that might be the common denominator here uh, what the dielectric grease ended up doing in the in the uh, boots themselves if we have moisture in the cap it would make it harder for the spark to jump to the plugs and so maybe we're getting some more cross firing in the cap that's what I believe is happening we can we can maybe prove that it's pretty difficult to um, to see an, an inside cap rotor issue on a on a secondary waveform uh, we might be able to do a um, test where we're looking at all of them the coils right here so if I clip this here now we can see all four it's gonna give us a better picture too it actually is a much better picture let me readjust these scales now see how much more stable it is mm -hmm. feels nice cooling fan just turned on see all that hash in there that's it that spark is jumping outside the combustion chamber when you see that I'm gonna squirt a little bit of water on this distributor cap. Now, one of the things you don't wanna do is get water on your secondary probe because that'll mess your pattern up in itself, okay? But just wanna put a little bit on here, see if we can recreate this. I believe it might be moisture related. It's kinda of hard to not get water on my secondary lead here. You see, see how wonky my waveform got, but that's just because of, because of the water. I didn't hear it missing from that. So it's not moisture related, just something going on inside that cap. Now, will we see evidence? I do not know. It's crazy that that thing started to misfire on us and then quit. Well, one thing I'm grateful for is that we didn't run out just based on my hunches and buy a coil because this doesn't need a coil. All right. Dude, how cool is that little mini scope, man? You guys, a lot of you guys do it yourselfers, especially that follow me. You, you know, it's a little intimidating when you see me break out a, you know, $10,000 scan tool and scope and man, it, it, you don't need to spend that kind of money. This little pocket scope's like $400. $399 for the kit. And that kit comes with an amp probe, it comes with secondary ignition adapter, and it comes with some test leads for $399. Like, you just can't beat that. If you don't have a scope, I mean, I always get that question. What do you recommend, Danner, for a scope? I mean, that's it, right there. A little single channel scope. You can do a lot with it. All right, so I had them do the thermostat as well on this. I don't know if they had this distributor cap off. I would imagine that they did. Having the distributor cap off would be uh, a lot easier to do this thermostat that's right, under, right underneath it. Just trying to connect the dots on why this thing started acting up after these repairs. This is one of the hard parts about our field sometimes. You know, you get a customer that says, hey, it, it, it never did this before you touched it. And for something like this, man, if I didn't, you know, I would question the customer. I, I honestly would think the customer's lying because there were zero symptoms 
on this car until we did a thermostat, pulled the valve cover, did the water pump. There were no misfire symptoms before. There weren't. It's my son's car. So sometimes we think our customers are lying and they're not. This is one of those ones that would be really difficult to, to know for sure. Because a, a lot of the time, what we see as mechanics, we'll get a customer that'll come in and do something like this to us because they don't want to pay for it. And they want the mechanic to eat it. That oil that's in there is not good. And neither is that thing. Look at that wrapped around the button. Wait, there's copper wire in here. You see it? Yep. Look at that. This is what's causing our misfire for sure. No question about it. How did it get in there? I don't like the oil, but look at this on the button. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. What is that? So, so there's that. And then look in the corner down, down yeah, here. I saw that wire. It's like little pieces of copper wire. Hey, I couldn't have it. got it. Where's that coming from? It is legit small pieces of copper wire all right so my guess is that's getting wrapped up and that's what's causing the cross firing in, in the cap um just cleaning this out should fix our misfire completely but i don't like the oil that's in there and i don't know where that would have come from oh it's all underneath here too i got it Should I get a mirror? Can you see it? Jake has an inspection mirror in his car. Does he seriously? Yeah. Why does he have an inspection mirror in his car? I was looking for that mirror. What the hell is he doing with my freaking inspection mirror? I saw it. Hold this. Seriously? He has my inspection mirror in his car. Yes. I've been looking for that mirror. Either that or he took it from the dentist. He has some shot glasses too. I don't know if you're looking Some shot glasses? <laughs> yeah. That bastard. Why does he have my inspection mirror? <laughs> I've been looking for that forever. Look at all that copper wire in here. Where's that coming from? I need to pull this apart further. This is our misfire. This is a weird one, man. I've never seen anything like that. All right, so I'm convinced they had this distributor cap off when they did the thermostat. That's how we connect the dots with all of this because that was disturbed. Whatever copper, where, that, where that's coming from was disturbed when they pulled the cap off, put the cap back on. Make sense, Caleb? That's why we had a miss. And that does make sense too with the dielectric because that was arcing inside. It wasn't, I know we caught the number three, but we were showing misfires on the other cylinders too. This was cross firing inside this distributor cap. No question about it. Crazy. All right, I'm gonna clean this oil off of here while we are here. Use a little brake clean. Get this copper wire off of here. Nothing to see. I was just looking for just some burn mark marks or anything like that. You know, something like that white part right there isn't isn't good either because what can happen is it can the spark comes in here and then instead of coming out here and being distributed around the cap, it can arc. See that white mark on the bottom? Mm -hmm. I don't like that at all. Don't like that at all. So what I would do to check that is a little unconventional, um, but we need to verify that spark is not jumping out of that location. Um, we'll, we'll connect some jumper wires and do that in a minute. I just wanna see where this, this is coming from. Look at that. Holy. It's the yeah, pickup man. coil in the distributor. The winding of the pickup coil is coming apart. So what that's going to be, Caleb, is that's going to be on the primary side of this. And uh, that would absolutely cause misfiring too. Mis misfiring as far as the secondary wouldn't be firing at all. Not weak spark like we saw. I believe the weak spark is what we described. I believe it is because of the copper 
windings that were in the cap itself, but this is gonna cause misfiring on the primary side, which we did not catch for you guys, but that's what that is. This distributor needs to be replaced. How's this thing even running at all? Holy. How's this even running at all? That's my pickup coil winding. <laughs> It's not going to run anymore. How weird is that? Now, question is, I think I saved the other distributor, didn't I? I didn't throw that distributor away, did I? If I did, I'm a freaking idiot. You know, I gotta deal with your shit here too. Hey, that's my stuff. Don't touch it. There's no way that I threw that away. Found it. Where's the winding that that came from? Well, the magnetic pickup's right here. So there's two, right? You got one down below. It'd have to be from the bottom one, from the bottom pickup. I don't like that this is like, that's like cut. Who did that? Did I cut that? Did I freaking cut that? Why the hell would I do that, Caleb? Rookie mistake. Look, this is taped up. This capacitor is taped up. It has to be from this lower inside pickup coil. Like this is one of them right there. I'm just surprised that it ran at all. We got to try to piece one together here, son since we have it that means we're gonna have to set timing on this too when we're done let's see marking this see how the keyway is not centered to the shaft mm -hmm. see how it's like it's over a little bit to the to my to this side it's not in the center so that means it can only go in it can't go in this way it can only go in that way okay Does that make sense I don't know anything about the mechanics of it. So. Well, there's a th if there was a slot inside, there is. I mean, you can't put it 180. Oh, I understand. It can only go one way. I understand. Yeah, got it. And if it, if this was in the center, it'd be able to go two ways. Put this rotor back on for a minute, so we know where we're pointing. And the front side of the rotor, right, right here, right, right in the center, is right. I'm just scratching a mark on my thermostat housing. Okay, that's where the rotor should be pointing when we're done. 10 minutes, my ass, huh? Huh, Caleb? This is not anticipated work here. But at least we didn't become parts changers and order of ignition coil before checking it. It did not need a coil. All right, so I'm gonna mark this, this shaft to the, um, nah, I don't need to do that. No, don't have to do that. We'll have to time this when we're done because moving a distributor changes your timing. Ah, oh, sh**. I can't use this distributor. What? I can't use this distributor. I don't think I can. Maybe if we piece it together. When I, when I pull this out of the old car, well, we might be able to use the pickup. Well, may, maybe too, that's why it was missing but this distributor was causing all kind of problems i remember now and without troubleshooting it i just swapped the distributors and it fixed the problem so this had a problem where was the problem i don't know i think i might order a distributor for this caleb i think it's better than just putting one in that has a different problem You see the lower part, that's where it's coming from. Yeah, yeah. So that pickup coil came apart on the inside. And this thing's, this thing, the fact that there's oil, was oil inside, and there was oil on the rotor means that the shaft of this is worn mm -hmm. to the point where we've gotten some oil contaminants inside. And um, I don't want to use, well, it would be that one we'd use. Can we piece? stuff from this into that 
is the question. What's the plan? I don't know. I feel like I want to just order a distributor for this and not mess around. You said you don't even remember what the problem was with that With one. this one, I don't know. I know that this one's got a messed up pickup coil and these pickup coils look okay. So, I mean, we could use this. I, I can salvage this. Well, why don't we um, shut down and then go on the workbench mm -hmm. and close the garage door so we're not freezing? Mm -hmm. You wanna do that? Yeah. All right, pause that. Good. I just told Caleb, come on, man, one take, that's it. One take, that's all we're doing. Good morning, nope, I already screwed I it, it up. As as I, said it, that you good ask. morning, I never say good morning. It's not morning anyway, it's like four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> that didn't work at all. Hey guys, Scanner Danner here with my son Caleb behind the camera. We're at my house with my son's car to my right. And it was just, can we see it in the shot? No? I want to try that again. Ah, oh, damn it. bad because I'm like kind of zoomed in on you. Come so on. This is good. Try it like this. Can you see Jake's car? Most of it. I mean, is it there? No. It just, can you see that there's a car next to me? Yeah. What a diva. Seriously, we can. It can still be a one take if I just don't edit it's, it. It's not. <laughs> it's not one take. This is like take three. Right. <clears throat> it's cold. My hands are freezing. Harry, <laughs> your hands are freezing. All I can think about though is how I bit my tongue and it just hurts so bad. What'd you do that for? I didn't mean to. I just bit the side. You know how it catches on your teeth and you can't talk? Yeah. You have like a lisp. 